here we have a 2022 Trek Imanda ALR. This is an absolute gorgeous bike with an amazing paint scheme. I mean, this bike can make any backdrop look nice. I want to take you all on a ride and give you my overall thoughts on the Imanda ALR, what I like about it, what I dislike, and who I feel this bike is for. Y'all ready? Come on, let's go. What's going on, bikers? Welcome back. If this is your first time here, I welcome you to this channel. I'd like to take y'all out on rides with me as I go over different topics. And today I'm going to talk about my 2022 Trek Imanda ALR. Now, for those who haven't been following this channel, it's pretty much an ALR5 as it's specced with uh, the 105 group set. Uh, however, I did buy the frame and supplied the 105 group set from an older Damani. So um, that's why it's just a ALR. Um, however, let's go ahead and get into this review. So the first topic I want to talk about is aesthetics. Now, this bike has clean lines. Um, it looks like it's carbon. Trek's paint jobs are one of the best in the businesses. Also, the ALR features invisible weld technology. So it looks like it's one big piece of aluminum that came together and gives it a nice clean look. Uh, which also um, decreases the weight and increases the structural integrity. Also, the bike comes with an internal cable routing, which again gives it a nice clean look and helps that the helps the bike resemble its higher end carbon counterparts. Also, the blender mount compatibility, which I really enjoy. And as you see here, I am using the blender mount with this. Um, aftermarket mount that goes with the blender mount that gives it a nice clean look with the wahoo bolt um, I can put my element bolt which I have there um, along with the light underneath of it um, and it gives it a nice clean look now when you combine those items with the overall shape of the tubing and the overall geometry of the bike itself you get a gorgeous looking machine that resembles some of the nicest riding environments you can find with palm trees and mountains in the backdrop and speaking of mountains you may want to take your imanda to different kind of services and one thing being an aluminum frame it does have durability now being aluminum it offers that durability that a carbon bike may not offer and that's thanks to the aluminum 300 frame that this comes with also, the versatility of being able to fit up to a 32C tire if you do find yourself in some um, not smooth road conditions, you'd be able to navigate through them with uh, a bigger size tire. But let's go ahead and jump back on the road and talk about something that Demanda is known for, which is climbing. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is his weight. Now, this Imanda, which just happened to be a 56 centimeter, um, weighs about 9.4 kilograms or about 19.92 pounds. And like I said earlier, it does offer the 300 series alpha aluminum. And at first, when I first saw it, I thought they gave me the wrong frame. I thought I had a carbon frame. I had to actually touch on it and hit on it to make sure that it was aluminum. It's so light. But let me pause the review real quick to give you a fair warning. This bike is so beautiful that everyone including dogs want to get a closer look and normally i don't mind if someone wants to look at my bike or ask me some questions but not in the middle of a climb you could have waited but anyways let's get back onto this video so as i was talking about the weight uh, one of the things that this bike is great for is, is climbing and one of the single most important uh factors that makes a bike great for climbing is its overall weight and this way this bike uh, weighs less than a lot of bikes including carbon bikes like for instance my Damani and this allows it to climb very well now even though I was on an aluminum bike and not a carbon bike like my Damani I found the climbing to, on this bike to be exceptionally well um, I even you know partly enjoyed climbing 
um, as crazy as that may seem, because of the bike. And along with the weight, this bike did feel exceptionally responsive. Now the next thing I did want to talk about is the price and the value that I think it brings. In the cycling world, you know, the biggest impactor of price is usually how much does something weigh, and the less that it weighs, the more you're going to pay. Now, with that in mind, the weight to price of this ALR Imanda, I think it's a great balance where you get something that's still lighter in weight, like I said earlier, than some um, carbon bikes, and you get it at a really good price point. At the time of this recording, this bike goes for $2,100 um, for this ALR 5 version of this bike. And this may be the perfect balance for someone who may not want to pay for a higher end carbon bike but want something that's lighter in weight and can perform um, pretty well and i think that balance here that this bike offers um, would check a lot of boxes for a lot of people and just like its carbon counterpart the so5 um, the alr5 comes with the shimano r7000 105 group set which i love and i think if you want to find balance again between price and performance the 105 is where it's at and now keep that in mind for an alr 5 to an so5 the price point is a thousand dollar difference where the so5 costs a thousand dollars more than the alr5 and because the so5 has more of a aero form factor the alr5 actually weighs less than the carbon so5 the carbon so5 comes in at 9.15 kilograms or 20.18 pounds and like i mentioned earlier the alr5 comes in at 9.04 kilograms and 19.92 pounds so if your main focus um, is getting a lighter bike then the alr5 stock comes lighter than the carbon thousand dollar more counterpart now as you see we started the descend portion of this ride and after all that climbing it was well deserved so we're going to use something that everyone loves like the descend to talk about something that people don't like to talk about which is the negatives of the bike there are a couple things um nothing major that um i would say i would prefer to be different now the first thing is the price you could find a comparable spec bike for a cheaper price tag and a different brand now, being Trek, it does come with great customer service and being able to go to a, a Trek store, which um, I have plenty in my area, which specializes in my bike and has um, the parts that my bike may need. Um, and they may be worth spending a little extra, but that's up to you. Second thing is this press fit bottom bracket. Now, this thing is noisy. And if someone likes a quieter ride, this may annoy them. So. Um, I kind of block it out and it's not a big deal for me, but I can see what, why it could be an issue for some people. Now, one thing to come in mind is also a little gripe of mine is the fit. As the ALR only comes in an H2 fit, which is a more relaxed fit and it's actually something I prefer. However, it would be nice to have the option of getting the 1.5 fit, which the SO models come in, or even the uh, H1 fit which is a longer uh, lower geometry which is more of a race fit um, just to have that option to be able to choose would, would be nice as well now the last thing that i want to talk about that which could be different is the comfort now um, anyone who's been following my channel anytime know that um, i love the damani and one of the biggest things that the damani offers is that iso speed and that comfort and it's more pronounced once you start riding on different road surfaces riding on smooth surfaces is not as bad or not as not as pronounced um, but once you start getting on different surfaces like these um, wood planks here um, on this segment or as you see here on these kind of like stone segment um, you really feel the impact um, through your body as you're absorbing each and every tire rotation over um this less than smooth riding surface so those who may have like um, messed up roads or gravel roads uh, i know in a 
uh, Washington DC area where I normally ride at uh, the roads aren't the best um, and you feel those um, imperfections in the roads as you're riding without that ISO speed or some sort of uh, comfort system built into the bike like the Damani has and um, that would be one of the, the biggest negatives I would have with this bike now who's this bike for if you're looking for something that performs very well especially on the climbs um, is relatively light compared to other bikes and at a pretty decent um, price point I think the ALR would be a good option for you to look at um, now if you're focused on comfort um, and distance maybe not so much especially if you're on um, rougher roads because again there's no uh, like comfort system built into the bike um, however for climbing um, it does absolutely great um, and again for being light it does great now I want to hear from you guys leave a comment below let me know what you think of the Monda um, what you think of the ride uh, we got some pretty nice views here and one of the things I always say in my videos is where's the bike gonna take you and as you see where our bike is ending up it doesn't get much better than this view right here um, well with that being said I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video uh, I appreciate y'all joining me for this ride and for this review and I hope y'all found this review helpful and y'all like this content if y'all do I would appreciate it if y'all uh, drop a like on the video so YouTube can share it with other people and of course if you want to see more content Don't forget to subscribe and I'm gonna talk to y'all soon. I'll keep on riding and be safe